Hello there and welcome. My name is Suzanne from Nonstop Paper Crafts. Thank you for joining me again on my channel. Okay, so this week's video has been prepared for the Junk Journaling for Everyone Facebook group. We are currently holding different challenges each week. This is week two mini chomp challenge and it's all about decorating and embellishing pages for your signatures. If you are not part of the Junk Journaling for Everyone Facebook group and you are not aware of these um, challenges, then please go and visit the group. I'll put the link below and make sure you sign up so you can take part. Uh, even if you're not joining in with the challenges, this is still a very useful video for somebody looking to embellish pages. So the challenge is to create six signature pages. So they are A4 folded in half, as you can see here. And some I've already started to embellish and decorate. And then I'm just showing you a few different things that you could possibly gather that might help you with your decorations. So I've got book pages, I've got napkins, stencils, um, an embossing folder. Um, I've even got some laminated flowers that I'm using, some different lace trims, uh, different pattern papers, washi tapes, stamps. Uh, anything you can gather really that you have in your stash would be useful for decorating your pages. Now I know that many people out there use digital kits, that's absolutely fine, but for those of you that may not have access to a printer or um, any scrapbook paper, this is a great way to also just add some interest and some decoration to your pages. So here are some that I made earlier. So this first sheet I'm going to show you, um, you can see I have punched out patterns along the side just to add some decoration to the edges and this is all on tea stained paper and uh, yeah it goes through to both sides and then I've just done a bit of stencil work on there as well using a vintage photo ink and then I've left the inside blank for um, pockets and tucks and things so that was one of the pages that I did This next page um, has lots of different things on there. So I've obviously got a trim up the edge of the page. I've used book page, I've used stamps, a bit of stenciling. And on the back, I don't know if you can see that very clearly in the video, but I have embossed. So it's just another way to add different texture and a bit of a pattern to your page. And this final page, um, again, just for a bit of interest, I have got um, a napkin that has been decoupaged along the back and then created a window using a die and a laminated flower. So the die has obviously made the frame and it just hides where that laminated flower is stuck down. So those are just obviously three ideas and different ways that you can embellish your pages. I have obviously put a lot into those three pages. You don't have to use all of those techniques in yours. Um, I have got three spares, so we're going to start with this first one. I'm going to show you how I did this. So using my first piece, again, it's just a folded A4 piece of paper, and I'm going to start with some stenciling. So I've got various different patterns here. I try to pick things that would go with my theme, so I'm doing Jane Austen. So I've got lots of sort of florals, and again, I'm using the Distress Ink Vintage Photo. Uh, this tool that I'm showing you now is a really good tool. I think it's actually for makeup, um, but it's such a lovely soft brush and it's really, really good for stenciling. I will put some links down below in my description. Uh, they will be Amazon links. They are affiliate links, but that means nothing um, to you. It doesn't cost anything extra. Um, and of course, you don't obviously have to buy through my links, but it just gives you an idea of what they're called. Um, so you can obviously shop around and get the best possible price for you. But I will have links below. Um, for any of the bits and pieces that I think you might want a link for in this video. So I'm just stenciling here. Um, I have gone over the edge a little bit, as you can see. Um, it doesn't have to be obviously perfect sitting in the middle of the page. It looks quite cool when you've got um, the stencil kind of coming off in the corner as well. So play about with your stencils. They don't have to be perfect. And then as you can see, even with the uneven stenciling uh, and the ink, it kind of gives a lovely texture as well. Now I'm just angling it at the bottom, again, just to kind of give a nice pattern on the page. Sorry, I realised I was out of frame a little bit there. But just a nice circular motion with that brush and it just gives such a lovely effect 
with the vintage photo, especially on the um, tea-stained papers. And the nice thing about these brushes is because they're nice and soft, even with an intricate pattern like what I have, um, it doesn't kind of move the stencil around at all, so it works really, really well. And then I'm just mirroring what I did in the other corner onto the top left. So again, stencil slightly off the page and circular motions with the brush. I actually really like using stencils in my work because I think it just has such a lovely um, effect in the background and it works really well as a base so you can build on top of um, any stencil work which is what I've done in my previous pages. Again if you are joining this video and you are not part of the Junk Journaling for Everyone Facebook group but you'd like to take part in this challenge then please make sure you go and check us out. I will put the link below. Um, this is actually, like I say, part two um, of a series of videos that um, will obviously build up to making a full journal. So if you're new, this would be perfect for you. Okay, so there is the A4 sheet um, all inked up. I'm now folding it in half. And now it's just about deciding which kind of border I want down the side. So I have a few of these edge punches, uh, some of them more intricate than others. Uh, but this time I think I'm going to go for something a little bit more simple. So I have a smaller edge punch that I'm going to use. And I hope you can see the pattern on here. I'm also going to be using my decorative corner punch because it has um, a similar pattern to the edge punch that I'm going to be using. So I'm just going to do the decorative corners first at the top and bottom. Okay, and then this time, instead of having three punches, because like I said, this is um, a smaller uh, edge punch, I am going to just do it once. So I'm just creasing it in half so I know roughly where the centre is. Uh, it would also help if I had my punch the right way round. There we go. So just slot it in. And make sure again, trying to line it up as best I can to the middle. And when I'm satisfied, give it a punch. Okay, I'm now just going to come in and neaten up that middle part just to really make sure that obviously you can see that there is a punch. So I'm just grabbing some scissors and I'm just going to cut into the um, punch just slightly because it does kind of um, give you a little bit of a strip of paper, which you'll see coming away in just a second. But it doesn't actually interfere with the decorative punch. So I'm just trimming that away by curving in slightly. And there we go. Get a slight decorative uh, edge in the middle. So as you can see, with just um, stenciling and a punch along the sides, it is simple but effective and a great base to now work on. So that is one set of pages done, both decorated with punched edges and some stenciling. Okay, on to the next page. Now I am going to change things up slightly and do a mixture of both. So obviously this one has the decoupage napkin and the window and the other one had the book page. So I am going to do some decoupaging again with what's left of my napkin and um, yeah, add some different elements to it rather than the window on this one. So I'm just removing the layers. So most napkins, I think, have three layers. Uh, mine's easy to peel off because I have already been using this napkin. So just removing that top layer with the pattern. And I'm now just kind of placing it around, deciding roughly where I want it. Um, I want that taller flower on the left-hand side of the fold. Um, and then just so it's not a straight edge, I'm just going to come in and kind of tear up the side 
and I don't want quite so much white at the top as well so I will tear along there. Now I'm not exact, um, obviously I don't want to tear into the flowers too much but obviously if I do accidentally tear into the flower a little bit it's not something that I stress about at all. Um, I just think it adds to the overall effect but as you can see I'm just going around the flowers, the edge of them, trying to get rid of some of that white um, but I'm not overly close to the flowers, just trying to go around and give it some shape. Okay, so again, just placing it, trying to decide where I want it. Like I said, that tall flower I want on the left hand side of that fold so it doesn't have to be dead center the napkin and then once I think I'm happy with where it's going to be placed then I'm going to start gluing it down so I'm just bringing in some book page so this is from a Jane Austen book and I'm just going to tear down the sides because I want to add this just behind the napkin so the napkin is going over this as well. So I've just given it a torn edge and now I'm just tearing a shape down the side. So it's not straight and I don't want that white at the bottom either so as you can see I'm lining it up at the bottom so that that white um, is overhanging because I can trim it off in a minute. And then once I'm happy I'm just using a glue stick to stick that down to the edge. to stick the napkin down I grab my PVA glue which is a standard PVA uh, nothing special and I have recently purchased this brush so it's a silicone brush actually Michelle um, mentioned this in her video so as soon as she mentioned it I was off buying um, it has got a curved edge I think this one's for the face where the, I believe hers were for the hair um, but it is obviously flat on the side so um, it works just as well so once I've kind of decided, I'll literally just drizzle some glue on and then use my silicon brush to just spread it about so it's more even. Then it's just about uh, eyeballing it and placing it down where I want it to be and smoothing it out obviously very gently because the napkin can tear and any areas that I've missed I will just apply a little bit of extra glue and then smooth out again with the silicone brush. Okay, so I'm also going to be adding to this um, an image from um, a Jane Austen book. 
I really love the gentleman helping the lady with the coat so I'm just going to tear around the edge of this and I'm going to stick this on the opposite side, so on the right hand side where the napkin is. One of the great things about designing your own pages in this way is that you can play around with the placement. So before you stick anything down, just move things around, try and add things behind. So I'm just seeing how it looks with um, some of the paper doilies underneath. And um, yeah, it's a nice way to kind of just play around, build before you actually stick anything down. So I've got some patterned paper here. I was toying with the idea of adding some of that. But... I don't think I'll decide to in the end. Nope, so here I am playing around with the doilies, looking at different sizes. Uh, yeah, that one's way too big, so back to the small one. But there seems to be a lot of white space underneath the couple, so I'm not quite happy with that, so I end up tearing off that white space there. And then once you're happy, it's just about gluing it down. So um, I'm just laying the picture there just so I know where my doily needs to go. Applying glue to the back. And I'm going to stick that underneath the edge of that picture. Okay, so just to add some extra interest, um, I have a text stamp here, so I thought I would do some stamping on the edge of that page as well, just behind um, the picture again, just to kind of add another um, level of interest, because we've got lots of kind of neutral colours. We've got the flowers popping on the page, so it just needed another colour. So. Um, I'm just making it a bit more faint, so I'm just stamping it once on some scrap paper and then just applying it on the page. So it looks very light to you on the screen, but I assure you there's some stamping there on the page. So I'm just doing the top corner as well around where that picture will be. And then once I'm happy with my stamping and where the positioning is, then I can stick down my couple. Okay, so now the page is finished, it's just up to me to trim off any access there. So just flipping it over and then carefully going along the edge of the page and just snipping off any overhanging parts. And there is a second page done. Now obviously because of the glue it's going to be uh, quite wet so you're going to want to leave it to dry. If you find that your paper is a little bit warped then just leave it under a heavy book obviously once it's dry and it will flatten itself out. But there is room there for journaling and then obviously the inside is blank again for either journaling space or if you're going to add pockets and tucks and things like that. But yeah, 
a pretty page. Okay, so on to our last page and I'm going to show you how to do this window. Now, as I said in the original one, I did use a die cut machine, but I do understand that not everybody will have a die cut machine, so I'm going to show you another way of doing it. Okay, so before we get to the cutting of the window, I am going to emboss the back. So I have this pretty one with the flowers on. So you can have this at all kinds of angles. So you can have it coming in at the corner, you can have it at the top, on the side. Um, it's entirely up to you, but I think just having that embossed effect just adds a bit of texture, a bit of interest to the page. So I'm just kind of working it around, deciding where I want my embossing to be. And then once I'm happy, I will run it through my embossing machine. And then the window will be on the other side. Okay, so I did do that off screen because my machine is a big shot, so it's quite bulky, but um, hopefully you can see on the camera that it has embossed in that top corner um, and has that beautiful flower design. I know it's not easy to see in the light, but um, yeah, that now is on both sides. So one side is embossed, the other one is debossed. So now to cut out our frame ready for our laminated flower. So I have pressed and laminated a flower. If you haven't got a laminated machine or um, don't know how to dry out flowers to press them, then you can of course just use some um, acetate that you get off the back of stamps um, or a window from one of the windowed envelopes. You cut out the um, clear plastic and you can use washi tape stickers. Um, you can get those fl uh, clear flower stickers, uh, put one of those on there. There are lots of alternatives um, if you don't press and laminate flowers. So um, as I said, I'm not going to be using a die this time. I am going to show you an alternative way. So all I'm doing is just measuring to see the size of my acetate, my laminated sheet. And then I'm going to obviously cut a rectangle that is just slightly smaller than um, what this is showing me. So I'm not measuring too well. At first I was going to use my ruler and then decided I probably wouldn't be able to get it exactly where I wanted it. So um, I wanted to make sure that you could see the embossed part underneath the window. So I'm just laying it on top and then with a pencil, I'm just going to draw around my um, laminated piece just so I have a rough idea of size. Now, those of you that know me and have seen my videos before, um, I am not really somebody that measures so um, some of you may be cringing at what I'm going to do next but I literally just grab my craft knife and start cutting. Okay so here I'm just bringing in my mini craft mat and I am rubbing my knife using my ruler and then like I said Sorry for those of you that like to measure if I'm making you cringe here, but I'm just looking at my pencil lines going slightly within them. And then, um, yeah, just judging it and cutting. If you are somebody that likes to measure, of course, please do measure. You could have drawn around um, the laminated sheet um, entirely, not just um, little lines like I did. Um, and then obviously just measured in however much you wanted to, half a centimetre or something. Um, but yeah, I haven't measured and as you can see I'm just cutting. Um, and I've done two sides already. I do have to turn the page, I'm left handed so uh, I, pr I do find it a little bit awkward cutting certain sides. Okay, so there is my window cut and you can see uh, the embossed on the other side. So that's all good. Just retracting my knife and putting that away before I do myself an injury. And also just checking that I haven't misjudged and my laminated sheet fits, which it does.
Okay, so to attach this, I am just using a thin double-sided tape. I'm just going right up to the edge of the frame and just cutting some strips. Um, it doesn't have to go necessarily from top to bottom in its entirety because I will be going over the top with a washi tape. So just some small strips around the side, just enough to hold it in place securely because while washi tape is pretty, it doesn't always stick very good. So the double-sided tape is just to make sure that that um, laminated sheet holds in the frame of the window. Okay, so now that that is carefully stuck in place, we can see through. I'm just deciding on a washi. So this is one that I used on a previous page, which is why I was thinking of using it this time. But after I keep looking at it, I just, yeah, I don't think it's the one I want to use. Um, I do start trimming it, but I will change my mind in just a moment. Yep, there I go. Okay, so these are some uh, washi samples that I actually got from my sister. Um, the reason I'm not using the other one is because um, it's one that you've got to peel the backing off and oh, I could never get the backing off those. So um, I was having a look at these and there's a lovely one with a text on. So I think I'm going to use that one. And all you do is just tear your strips. It does not matter if they're even or not. And you're just going to create a border with the washi tape. It hides um, obviously the edge of the laminated sheet uh, and it's decorative so yeah a win-win. Do remember that once you've done one side and it's looking all pretty, you also need to make sure that you do the inside. So open it up and repeat for the inside of the page.
Okay, and then that's it. That is our third page done. Okay, so here are our finished pages. So we have six decorated pages now, all with the Jane Austen theme, because obviously that's the one I'm doing. And just to take you through them, we have one that has beautiful cutouts on the edges and the lovely stenciling on the front and the back. And then plain on the inside, ready for any pockets or journaling space. Our next one has some book page images as well as some text. Also some decoupage napkin, again for texture. Again with the inside blank, ready for pockets and journaling. Uh, the other one with the punched edge, very decorative, again with stenciling on the front and back. And again, a nice blank inside ready for journaling and pockets. This is the first one with the window. As I said, I used a die cut for this one for the frame. Again, some napkin decoupage. And again, a blank inside ready for any journaling or pockets. Again, using book page, some stamping. This one even has some trim down the side, a beautiful embossed back, great texture, and yeah, just something different as you're kind of flipping through and feeling the effect of that page. And then the last one that we did is another window in a different style. So we've used washi tape and again, half an embossed back, again for that texture as we go through the pages. I really hope that this video has helped you get some ideas on how you can decorate your own pages. As I say, this is part of the week two mini chomp challenge for the junk journaling for everyone at Facebook group. So your challenge is to decorate your own six pages ready for your signature. Um, you could use any of the techniques I've used here, plus any of your own if you have anything different. I know lots of people like to use paints and inks and all sorts of things. I'm really excited to see what you guys create. Remember, if you are doing this as part of the challenge, to post your pictures in the events file and use the hashtag JJ4E if you are posting on any other social media platforms. Even if you are not part of the challenge, I really hope that you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you are not already a subscriber and you would like to be, please click the subscribe button below as well as the bell for any notifications. You can find me on different social media platforms. Those links will be below. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been an inspiration to you, even if you're not taking part in the challenge. And I hope you have a wonderful crafty day. See you later now. Bye bye.